In today's instalment, I wanted to address a question I get asked almost every day, which goes something along the lines of, how can I find radio scanner frequencies for my area? I had a think about this question, and there's a very simple answer, a way of finding all the listenable frequencies for your area, for your listening enjoyment. It costs nothing, and is very rewarding, but first there's some points we have to discuss. These are scanning directories, they're filled with thousands of weird and wonderful radio frequencies. They provide simplex and duplex listings, a location and a description of who's using that frequency. We can see huge listings for the police in this relatively modern copy. We can see frequencies in this one for things like Ministry of Defence paging, a Soviet space station and even Remington minicabs. I'll break off quickly and tell you this story for those who haven't heard me talk about it in previous videos. Remington minicabs appears within a block allocated to the MOD and the US Air Force in the UK. It was actually a very clever way of publishing a frequency used by vehicles operated by MI5 in London, and Remington came from Stella Remington, the head of MI5 at the time. Anyway, this book shows us a US Secret Service frequency. This one tells us we can listen to the Department of Trade and Industries Radio Investigation Service. They're literally filled to the brim with frequencies that'll make your mouth water, but the problem is, is that they're out of date. Now, you're probably watching this thinking, it's obvious they're out of date, you're showing us books from the 1990s and early 2000s. That's true, but there's newer books advertised online, as well as CD-ROMs you can buy, which claim to give you the latest frequencies, but there's a big problem. Most of the people producing these CDs just took out the police and added bits and pieces they'd heard to create something that's 99% out of date information from books like this and 1% up to date, and I say this loosely. You see, when these books were released every year or so, they were already out of date when they went to print. Books from the 2000s still included very old police frequencies, the UK Army's radio system called Mold which disappeared in the late 1980s, and a whole array of useless frequencies. Snippets of newer information were compiled on top of huge amounts of out-of-date information. So, how were they compiled? People all over the country formed groups that monitored the airwaves and shared information. The 1990s saw the rise of the social aspect of the internet. Chat rooms and message boards were a great place to share frequencies and all people had to do was browse them and skim them for information. People involved in the radio industry leaked all of the police frequencies nationwide when the UHF migration happened in the late 1980s. Others in the PMR business would share nationwide listings for organisations such as the AA, RAC and the Gas and Water Boards as they programmed their radios. All of these streams of information led to the creation of some quite controversial scanning directories during the early 1990s, which the UK government tried to ban. These books are useless for radio scanning. They do serve as a brilliant archive of the way things were and a handy reference for research, but as a scanning tool, they're no help. So how do you find frequencies? Well, you have to listen. This is what the people who filled their scanners with a wealth of amazing frequencies did during the 1990s heyday. There's still lots to listen to today. If you want the police, then scanning isn't the hobby for you, but you can still hear Shopwatch, Security, Military Airband, Civil Airband, Marine and a wealth of PMR traffic. There's lots of strange noises within the VHF and UHF part of the spectrum nowadays, which for the most part are digital standards which require a digital scanner. I did do a complete guide to radio scanning which you can find in the description below, where I talk about memorising the different bands within the VHF and UHF spectrum, what scanner to buy, what antenna to buy, and everything you need to get started in the modern scanning age. So, let's say you have your scanner and antenna, there's five steps you need to follow. Firstly is time. The only way of finding frequencies is to take the time to listen. Some of the best scanning targets may only transmit at certain times of the day, which requires investing time. 
Nowadays, many scanners record to SD card, and Whistler scanners record everything they hear into a software package, so you can go back and see what you've missed. This is a handy way of acquiring frequencies and looking for point number two, patterns. You have to look for patterns when listening, especially when monitoring digital repeaters that house multiple users on one frequency. Look for groups of talk groups to identify transmissions from one user. You also have to look for timing patterns, who comes on a particular frequency at a particular time. Some frequencies are only used during the day, some only during the night. Working out these patterns helps you to trace their transmissions. Thirdly, keep plenty of notes such as frequencies, times, talk groups, colour codes and CTCSS tones. It's always handy to note what you hear to build up a picture of who you're listening to. Do they mention people's names, locations or street names? All of this can help identify a target. Fourthly, use the Ofcom licensing portal. It gives you the names and locations associated with thousands of frequencies and is a great tool in identifying what you're hearing. You have to remember, things change. People opt in and out of radio systems all the time. Licenses expire, new ones are allocated, users move frequencies and all of this requires constant monitoring in order to stay up to date. And lastly, don't share. I did do a video on this topic, but most people share the information on colour codes, talk groups and slots associated with frequencies on publicly viewable sites and social media pages, which leads to companies who use radios going encrypted. If they know they're being listened to, they can just ask their radio system provider to switch on encryption, meaning you can no longer hear them. Scanned listings and documents that I usually feature in my videos are created using an old-fashioned scanner. It takes time to preview, scan, edit and save images. The scans in this video were made using the Lens Pro from Caesar. This 12 megapixel high resolution scanner scans anything and saves it to multiple formats within seconds using the supplied software package. It uses Corrective Edge to align your document and post processing to give you a clear and clean image. It can auto detect a document to scan, it combines multiple pages into one image. You can add watermarks, text and edit everything within the software package provided. You can use it as a document camera for live presentations and it also works as a portrait camera. It was easy to set up and install, the backlight enables crisp scans and it folds away into a small package. If you want to know more then I'll include a link below. So, I hope that answers a commonly asked question about radio scanning. There's no magic tool to fill your scanner with the latest frequencies, you just have to listen and be patient.